Hello and welcome to another episode of Trailblazers with a Trailblazer. Actually, in every walk of life, we know about his work during COVID. We've celebrated him as the district magistrate. Uh, you know, at that point in time of Gautam Buddha Nagar, his Paralympic silver marked a new beginning. Someone who I call a very dear friend of mine, Suhas Yathiraj, now Secretary of Sports and Youth Welfare and Director General of Youth Welfare and PRD. Suhas, welcome. I was reading about your win in Bahrain the other day uh, when I was traveling and I was like, we've got to connect again because clearly in Paris 2024, you've got to do more for India. So tell me first, how is it balancing sport and your, your job as a bureaucrat and a civil servant? And how are things moving with the Asian Para Games and the Paris Olympics a year from now? Suhas. Thanks, Boria. Thanks for having me. Indeed, indeed it's a pleasure uh, connecting with you again and with all your viewers. Uh, yes, this year particularly is very important for all the athletes. Uh, because as you know, Asian uh, Para Games uh, is coming and the Olympics, Paralympics cycle has uh, commenced. And uh, especially in badminton, because you have to maintain top rankings, you got to win as many championships as uh, one can. So, yes, I have had a decent start and uh, quite a uh, good number of medals in last, especially two tournaments, uh, one win and one gold and one silver. So, looking, things are looking quite positive uh, in that uh, regard. Uh, with respect to balancing, the, I think we all balance, right? Uh, we all uh, do multiple things. One might be doing work and then in the night, you know, he'll be watching movies or doing yoga. Happy yoga day to everyone which is celebrated uh, the other day. We do multiple things. The challenge really comes when you want to convert your passion into profession. And uh, yes, that is where you need to work extra hard because uh, you need to maintain extreme levels of fitness day by day. I think all sports, including badminton, if you see sporting events and sporting tournaments say 10 years ago and now whether it is uh, racket sports whether it is cricket or whether it is any other sport fitness levels have increased tremendously so we need to be fit and then continuously work on our uh, skills and uh, yes i think the daily two to three hours of uh, training uh, is what is needed and beyond a point of time i think uh, when you participate in major tournaments mental strength uh, comes into picture because I will, I will come to that i will come to that so in fact that was my next question that in bahrain for example you won seven matches on the trot to win seven consecutive matches it's not simply skill skill everyone has at the elite level it is also about mental strength and we talk a lot about mental health these days can you emphasize how much of this is mental strength and the self belief and the confidence that you uh, you as an athlete will have to have to win at elite level Yes, I'll tell you a favorite quote of mine which I tell to youngsters whenever I address them, whether they are studying, whether they play sports, it applies to life. Uh, most of us or the, even the viewers who are watching, everyone has written 10 standard exams, 12 standard exams and you know, many exams. It's not the person who has studied the most who ends up winning the, uh, who ends up getting the first rank or top 100 ranks essentially. So, the person who essentially writes the exam better, who performs well in those three hours, he ends up getting the uh, ranks or uh, accolades. So in sports also, it's very much the same. So yes, training does matter. We have to put in a lot of effort. But then when we, uh, when you go to uh, whether it's Asian Games, Paralympics, everyone is trained. Everyone has the passion to win and they are willing to put their life and heart and soul into it. So there what matters is how you tune yourself to actually give your best because very often what happens is many athletes they are very good in training games when you know the qualification game game they are very good but when you put them in the competition probably they take too much pressure natural game uh, it does not come so similarly you know you would have you'd be doing very well in rehearsal exams but when it comes to the actual exam you might not uh, do well so that is where you got to train continuously. In fact, I have lost many matches because I put too much pressure on myself. And uh, not long ago, this month in uh, Brazil, I lost in a uh, pre-quarter final match, which I should have won. Because I wanted to win so much that I could not perform my natural game. In Thailand and Bahrain, 
I removed all my, uh, the pressure. I told winning or losing, it's not in my hands. Let me go and enjoy myself. Go and give the best, and result is there for everyone to see. Don't take uh, pressure. Give your uh, play your natural game and give your best. When India went to Tokyo, we were coming at the back of four medals in Rio. So the expectation was tempered. When you all went to the Tokyo Games and all of a sudden we thought, okay, 10 medals, 15 medals and you all won 19 and the whole country was like euphoric. What's happened here? Now when you go to Paris, the whole country is expecting the Paralympics contingent to win 25, to win 30, to make a record. And, and, and when I see the Prime Minister, when I see the involvement of the political class, one sees that there is a huge change in the last few years. How do you look at that? Is that pressure? Is that opportunity? It is both. Uh, it's how we perceive it. It's definitely pressure if we think uh, that, you know, so many people are watching and uh, the country or the society is expecting uh, so much from it. But it's a, we are fortunate to be in a position wherein other people or society at large is expecting things from us. I think it's only a blessing and uh, opportunity. And uh, especially in Paralympics, if you look at uh, even now, even though we, uh, we might have won 19 medals out of which badminton has given four into the kitty, majority of the sporting competitions and majority of the categories, India did not even participate. participate. I think the first challenge uh, for uh, increasing the medal tally is to qualify in as many competitions and in as many categories as one can. So, in fact, uh, for Olympics and Paralympics, the qualification to the tournament is probably more tougher than actually playing in the tournament because so many countries are participating, the number of slots is uh, so uh, limited and especially badminton in Paralympics was introduced only in last uh, Paralympics. So, first road to Paris is where there are many bumps uh, for all the athletes for qualification and once uh, uh, an athlete gets into the Paralympics, then, as I said, it's completely just yes, training, training, training. But more than that, it's the mental strength to perform when it matters. So, yes, I think India should definitely do better. But for that, we should uh, we should qualify in as many events and categories as possible. On a you know slightly larger canvas, uh, Suhas. I mean, after Tokyo. I mean, in your case, obviously, uh, you know, as a civil servant and bureaucrat, you 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 are a kind of a celebrity. But have you seen inclusivity and sensitivity uh, uh, become a hallmark of our society? Are things changing in terms of embracing uh, people with disability, supporting para-athletes in the same measure as able-bodied athletes? Are you seeing such changes happen in India in the last four years? Yes, it has been, I would say, Tokyo Paralympics has been a watershed uh, moment in terms of uh, uh, the way society perceives the achievements of uh, persons with uh, disability or uh, differently abled uh, persons. Uh, previously, uh, a, the essence was more of compassion. Yeah. Now, because they have seen para athletes actually competing and winning uh, medals in world stage, so Compassion, yes, in some sense, I would say that is still there. It should be there wherever it is necessary. It again depends on which category. But the admiration part, which was probably missing previously, it has also come with uh, compassion. So when a person admires uh, any sporting uh, achievement, so I think that is where you feel the real joy. Not only that, I think in general, society has progressed a lot in last many years. And now, uh, in fact, I, uh, the other day I was seeing a photo wherein the district level associations, the industrial associations, the local civil society members actually celebrating the local level para athletes' uh, achievements. I think that is where the spurt has come. It has to come at district level, the taluka level, the village level. So I, I think that is where the churning is happening. I think going forward, uh, we will see a lot more women. We do better in uh, Paris, probably again, it will add, uh, it will be icing on the cake and going forward to Los Angeles and beyond. I think essentially India as a society, we have changed in, we are changing and changed in many respects and for the good uh, for with respect to persons with uh, disability. 
Coming to your own own preparation, how is it? I mean, can we expect something? Uh, uh, you know, obviously the country will will now the expectations are high. We'll all hope. But are you yourself satisfied? Say the Asian Para Games and then eventually Paris, because we move from Olympic cycle to Olympic cycle. However many tournaments, Bahrain, Thailand, you win, the country will be focused on these major events. I mean, that's how India is. So uh, as very specific one, how is Suhas Yathiraj mentally, is training wise? How are we going to see you in the next few months and in the next one, what, 15 months? Yeah, as I said, uh, the immediate challenge is to qualify for uh, Paris. I'm working very hard I think, so far and uh, faring quite well in the competition cycle. The immediate goal this year is to win uh, medal in Asian Para Games uh, to be stated to be held in China. That is one of the major tournaments probably in the world uh, after Paralympics. It's always the Asian Games, Asian Para Games, then the Commonwealth, then the World Championships. So, yes, looking forward for Guangzhou uh, this year. So, yes, I would. I don't want to put too much pressure on myself. I want to play one, I think in badminton, it's like, you know, one uh, competition at a time, then uh, take it, uh, take one match, one set, one point at a time. Because if you win every point, if you go, if you win sufficient number of points, you know, then you will end up winning matches, tournaments and uh, parliament. So, yes, that's how I see it. And extreme levels of fitness, day by day, I see the fitness levels in even Paralympics has increased tremendously. So, I'm especially working hard on that and still, yes, we, because again, it's cat and mouse game. It's true whether it is in any sport. Uh, in badminton also, the opponents always try, they watch our videos, they analyze and they try to exploit our weaknesses and at the same time, they see what are our strengths and if we are ahead, if we know our strengths and if we work on our weakness, so yes, we will definitely fare better in the competition. Last two questions. One, uh, you know, I, I remember asking you this and you said at one point in time, you even trained past midnight because that was the only time you had to train and you were pushing your body to the limits. Uh, are facilities adequate now in terms of training opportunity now that you're posted in Lucknow? I know Gaurav Khanna's academy is there, but are facilities adequate for Paralympic athletes? Yes, for elite Paralympic athletes, uh, the facilities are, I would say, more than uh, what is necessary. In all senses, there are, uh, as you know, Government of India supports the target of the podium scheme, talks, and then the scheme. There are many private foundations who, uh, which actually promote the uh, athletes, Olympic and Paralympic athletes. In fact, the government has come up with similar to COPS, uh, uh, Eklavi Push, wherein an athlete can be given up to grant of 5 lakh rupees. So I think this is where the positive changes have come. The real challenge is in terms of facilities and uh, the uh, uh, funds available, the elite athletes will definitely get it. The real challenge is those who are on the second level, the third level, that is where the real challenge is because federations need to be strengthened. You got to actually identify the real athlete who needs competition and uh, training help and that is where probably the work is needed. Uh, if I can tell the example of UP only, we have uh, more than 15 mini stadiums where indoor halls are there. Very few states would have it. So, it's all, many of them are complete, some of them are uh, coming up. I think sporting, uh, you know, we, when I used to be in college, we used to hear Australia is a sporting nation. So, I think you also mentioned somewhere uh, that India has become, a, India has always been a sports watching nation. So, now we are Please. sports, we are playing nation, we are embracing sports more than uh, just watching it on TV or on YouTube. So, yes, we are uh, going forward in that sense. Final one, you've done the, you've done the, you know, thing of already sort of, you know, climbing the Olympic podium. Does the color of the medal haunt you? <laughs> yes, it does uh, haunt me a lot. When I won a uh, silver medal that day, I said that, uh, you know, the first thing I said when the uh, reporter asked me just after the match was probably, and it holds true to this day. That day was or is the happiest and saddest day of my life because I was extremely happy that I won silver in Paralympics but I was extremely sad that I missed gold by a whisker. I almost uh, reached there and but you know sometimes I look back and I see uh, it's more of a philosophical thought. Uh, 
uh, when I was a college student or growing up in schools, I never thought I'll become a district collector, IAS officer, or Paralympic medal Arjuna award. I never thought. So once you reach a certain level, and I now I am here. If I always think about what I have not got in life, probably that is not fair to destiny. Also, I think destiny has been kind and has given me more than what I had ever imagined in my childhood. Yes, the belly is filled with fire, so I'll keep uh, doing my best and to change the color of the medal. But yes, destiny has been kind, and I should be contented in a sense. But when I enter the field, I know that you know now I'll have to some every time when I, when I pick up the badminton racket, that th- probably haunts me. That you know I could have won the uh, gold medal, I didn't. So let us see. I think time uh, will tell what will happen. But I'm still happy with my life. So yeah. Fingers crossed for you. I mean, very mature words and very practical and pragmatic words. Again, words that show me that you don't want to put too much pressure on yourself. Uh, great words. Uh, you know, I, I'll end there, Suhas, with the words that uh, clearly what is important for someone like you. is you've actually become a role model you've become a role model for people who want to balance both not many are able to i mean people think that if i play elite high performance sport i can't do something else in your case you've done both with so much accomplishment that you have actually become a role model for many in future and that's a big take away and yet you remain humble you remain rooted and that's what is far more important to me uh, that you as a human being also is a role model you will always have my support suhasi atiraj i mean no question we will be there in china to support you and we will be there in paris to support you thank you very very much for your time thanks bolia thanks for having me thank you thank you